Ladies and gents, welcome to UX, and this is Chaos Deathclaw ERP and Paperwork Space Distant Third Interview by the channel Remy Down Under Gaming. Well, this took a while to make. I didn't realize how much I missed Space Distant Thirteen and how much of a pain it is to actually make a video on it. So this review story, this video is what you get. You'll enjoy it. Okay, another Space Distant Thirteen video, I guess. Uh, Space Distant Thirteen Dwarf Fortress is another game. Like the more great videos are there, the better, I guess. There's, you can never get you know enough for Space Distant Thirteen. So let's watch it. Hey, hey, people. Space Station 13 is one hell of a game, and it's easily up there with my favorite games of all time. It's unique in so many ways, and many of those make it damn hard to actually make a video on. Least of all how sticky my mailbox is getting. I've got many stories for you today, like the time I took so much meth I pinged off the walls of the station and became mentally retarded. But to talk about Space Station 13, we've got to take a step back and talk about everything that surrounds it first. Mandalore did a great video on the game that you should go watch, but more likely than not if you're watching this video, you've already seen Seth's video. If you haven't, go watch it. The guy's a legend and he deserves the support. Not that he bloody well needs it because his video fucking exploded. This resulted in what the community calls the Seth Tide. Seth Tide and the General Tuba Tide is a new version of what the community calls the Grey Tide. The assistants in the games are the ones running around in grey jumpsuits with nothing to do and everything to break. So a Grey Tide is servers suddenly getting overwhelmed with new players. And if there's one thing this community hates, it's new players discovering their secret Spaceman game. Which- That's just stupid, I mean like, <laughs> oh god, fuck, another specific video, shit, shit, please don't do- <laughs> Why are people like this? What people troll way too much in Space Station 13 or something that people don't want new players? The thing this community hates, it's new players discovering their secret Spaceman game. Which is a heavy irony because the game was stolen in the first place and then stolen again from the people yeah. that stole it. And so on. Mandalore explains it a lot better. Regardless, this fear is so great that me posting a goddamn screenshot set things off and my video about radios was posted in the subreddit by people who probably didn't even watch it. That video would not have convinced you to play Space Station 13. Regardless, that's why I felt I had to kick things off this way. I mean, after the stupid hype of a Rimmy Tide, I guarantee this video is going to roll in 20,000 views, and the only Rimmy Tide will be one guy lost in his way to play the amazing Sigro Gana Legend 2. But I love this game to bits, and thanks to all the cash I've made in becoming a famous VR esports competitor, I've decided to dedicate the time to making this love letter to my many stories of Space Station 13. And I know someone's gonna call me a Seth Dido or accuse me of riding in on the bandwagon. I know this because the fucking Grandmaster of Gatekeepers DM'd me on Reddit after the post blew up. But I remembered my training and I retrieved my keisted reverse card. The same with the Seth Mandela. Have you been playing since early? <laughs> I'm sorry, Gatekeeper but my e -peen is bigger than yours. I even made a now unlisted video on the game back when I was younger and thank god the statute of limitations is out on that one cause that was the meta comms. He built a skull ah. throne. Skull for the skull throne. throne. Oh dear god. Blood for the blood god. But indeed I'd fallen off playing for a while and it was the sudden combination of Seth's video, the people in my armor unit and this goddamn degenerate influenced by a lovely guy by the name of Russ Money. That got me back into it. You see, now I was faced with a problem. I had all these great stories, but no footage. So I decided it was time to visit every single server anyone could recommend, try them all out, see what had changed since my old days, and make some new stories. Whilst everyone says they're playing the same game, thanks to the insane nature of the community and the game itself, there's not only servers of different size, roleplay expectation, and ERP allowance status, but of entirely different code bases and wholly different game modes. Some will hate me for saying their name, but you've already sold my mailbox, what more can you do? Our first story is on Paradise, known for its furries and it involves skeletons. Spooky, scary skeleton. So scary in fact, that one could say this event was about one step away from outright admin abuse between everyone having constant panic attacks and vomiting butterflies, and having to beat the shit out of all manner of undead creatures. But it was when I, cargo technician Kenneth Gunderson, found myself fighting alongside the captain that I realized my good fortune. He wasn't paying attention, and on the table there was a juicy prize for any intrepid explorer. The Hand Teleporter. Only two of them exist on the station, and one was now mine. A few minutes later, the second one was also mine. I went to talk to the chaplain to see what God thought about the literal undead uprising on our station. 
The chaplain was a furry with his goddamn OC linked in his bio. My soon-to-be best mate Roy showed up, a human with a baseball bat. He beat a ghost to death with it, then gave it to me. I decided to disregard what the furry said and went off to whack monsters and later start a race war with the Vox. Back home in Cargo Bay, I managed to convince a weird lizard thing to come on a magical adventure with me. Oh, the places we went. We went to the teleporter room. We went to a place with no oxygen. We went out to deep space. Then we went back to the teleporter room and got the shit kicked out of us by security. Now let's pause for a moment to recognize that no one likes security. Absolutely no one likes them. No good players play them. And they're universally hated and the first under the guillotine when the proletariat rise. <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> Everybody has their jobs and everybody are real players. So this creates a weird dynamic, right? Like people would be best at what they're doing, right? So even security, like, who the fuck is abusing this and just runs towards the room. As soon as they come back, they start to beat the shit out of them. And all the different servers, which means uh, there are some like Star Wars type, you know, icy places and different type of things. Is that what it is, right? Every server is different. It's just the main source of the game is the same. But otherwise, everything can be different. Security are a bunch of unwashed cunts. There's a reason everyone calls them shit security. Much like the 17 year old commander of an armor 3 unit, security is for people with no power in real life to pretend that they have it in a video game. So nothing gives me a bigger hard on than sticking it to them. A combination of never shutting the fuck up, playing too much secret Hitler and being an insufferable cunt gives me an amazing power. The ability to talk over issues. After a good while of bold faced lies and excessive talking, the detective decided to let us go free. But shit security wouldn't back down that easy. Because the only thing worse than a security player is a security Borg. See, cyborgs in Space Station 13 are like all AI, unfeeling and bound by Asimov's laws. The players in the match can actually upload new laws to the AI, like the captain is a threat to the station and such. But unfortunately, all these laws rely on something rather rare. The Silicon players actually role-playing them. Instead, many mouth breathers see Silicons as more powerful humans with no need to actually role-play so they can shit security over anyone who coughs too loud. They love to ignore the fact they're supposed to listen to humans. God, I love this graph that is never paid attention to. So the Borg ignores the repeated instructions of the detective, opting to re-arrest us and drag us back while beating us like a true American officer. Even better, my best friend from before, Roy, was here too. His crime? He was turning in contraband. Yeah, they, <laughs> this is where the Bethesda's, you know, motto comes. It's not a bug, it's a feature. <laughs> That's right, people. A good citizen who turned in a weapon he found was arrested. Because security is full of good people, who aren't total cunts. I'd like the members of the jury to remember that the highest sentence in Space Station 13, on average, that isn't death turning you into a cyborg or permanent brigging, that is to say, sticking you in jail forever, is only 15 minutes. We were in the interrogation room for 25 minutes by this point. Well, the warden finally arrives on his Segway, and it's time to reveal my trap card. This warden has no idea what actually happened, and I can bullshit far better than this piece of shit toaster. A few minutes of screaming later, I was walking out the front door, bloody and bruised, but with the sort of hard on one can only get from fighting the law and winning. I went to the bar and had a drink with a detective who was a bottle of whiskey away from cleaning his gun barrel with his mouth, and I whispered to him that I was in fact guilty the entire time. He didn't care. We shared a drink and parted ways. You may wonder why it was so easy. Where were all the other guards? Well, during the whole mess, the nanotrans and representative, that is to say the corporate suit, stole everyone's money. All of it. He cleaned out every single account. When the station found out, they all went on strike. Security decided to go get drunk, and the engineers declared themselves a private enterprise. Life was good on this station. And that was just one round of Space Station 13, the real beauty of the game. <laughs> so some other shit happened <laughs> that just benefited him. Oh god, so many shit is happening at the same time. And the reason that you can't really stream or make a straight let's play of it is that there are moments that aren't going to happen every round. You might have nothing happen for the first hour, then have a five minute gun battle across the entire station so intense that Michael Bay kicks in your door and demands the rights to your movie. But if you want real intensity, you need to try Colonial Marines. It's a gem. A Space Station 13 server about being a platoon of Marines sent down to investigate aliens. And back when I played, people loved it or fucking loathed everything to do with it. It was in Colonial Marines that I noted most of the changes from the old ways. For one, they have a fucking tank now. But more immediately, I remember attachments. Attachments are the bits you stick onto your gun to make them better. And one thing armor players and Colonial Marines have in common is they fucking love attachments. Back in my day, they all had to line up in the requisition line to get their two attachments, a good, hard limit. And Marines are monkeys. They'll screech and fight and murder to get their precious fucking attachments. A real man fights A's without any. Now? These lazy ass millennials have their own private requisition bays, and they can even get them from dispensers. Grumbling like a true boomer, I picked up my veteran's <laughs> kit, which contained a goddamn underslung flamethrower. 
<laughs> I remember <laughs> Undertaker basically bitching to Joe Rogan or something like how every how every wrestler is soft playing video games and shit. I don't know why I got that vibe. Like okay, in my time people used to and look at this now they just have their own machine for it. <laughs> and Private First Class Kenneth Gunderson was ready for duty. No, he was in Bravo Squad, and we were assigned to forward operating base duty. That meant only one thing: toy sword fights, and lots of them. Holy fuck, we were bored. Finally, after ages of holding the line against bad Star Wars references, we were ordered forwards to burn out the alien hive and wipe them from this colony. Now here's the real secret about colonial marines. Just like in real war, rule one for surviving is to get a purple heart and go home. We roll out, balls big and guns cocked. We bust into the hive, lighting the place on fire and going to town on the A's. It was then I got my sweet ticket out of there. My hand gets cut off, and scooping up my gun, I head back to the FOB to claim my medal and ride the shuttle out. Unfortunately, the way back wasn't secure, and it was time to prove that I hadn't lost a lick of my robustness. If you don't know Space Station 13, you may wonder what the hell I just said. Robust in Space Station 13 is essentially another word for how good you are at fighting. The game's fighting mechanics are arcane and amazingly awkward to use. But with enough practice, you too can fight like a Japanese martial artist. That is to say, a martial artist armed with a toolbox. So, there I went, one-handed and in the dark. You see, firing a rifle in CM one-handed is a bad idea. The recoil is massive, you'll probably miss, and rifles are fucking useless anyway. I grab my knife, stabbing the alien, daring to attack me. Texas Red over here made one fatal slip. He let me get back to my weapon, and I didn't need the rifle. I needed the underslung flamethrower. I lit that bastard up and made my escape, coming across its dead body later. Finally, my flame is spent and balls intact. I made my escape, aided by a friend I found. Rule two of Colonial Marines. I mean, that screen movement, is that the recoil? <laughs> that is fucking ridiculous. Marines, just to get a friend less wounded than you. They'll feel obligated to help and even sacrifice themselves, whilst you limp to safety. Soon I was back aboard the ship and issued a new robotic hand before being ordered back down to the defense. Thankfully some acid in my eyes proved a perfect reason to retreat once more. And I was back on the ship home whilst my brothers and sisters banged on the doors begging us to open up whilst the aliens outside ate them. Private Gunderson didn't care. He was home free with two purple hearts, a sick robot hand and his best buddy on the escape pod with him. Yeah this uh, this guy recognized me. I don't know how like five separate people recognized me with him. Yeah this. Uh, this guy recognized me. I don't know how like five separate people recognize me from the name Kenneth alone. God damn it. Now we take a moment to rant about game design. See, Space Station 13's your Well, like they said, it is a tight community and if somebody named Kenneth shows up, they'll be like, who the fuck is this Kenneth? Never seen that before. Oh, is that? That would just... <laughs> it's horrible. The interface is terrible, the controls are bad, and the graphics are simple pixels. But... All of this actually plays in its favor. See, much like Dwarf Fortress, Space Station 13 is the perfect example of gameplay over looks. Because yeah. the game is only 2D and done with pixels and text, it means that anyone can code in or add in anything they like and have it work. There have been many- That's the fucking thing with the Dwarf Fortress Space Station 13. Like, you know, this is the precious and I get it after, you know, reacting to Seth videos, lots of Seth videos. Like, if you make a pixelated game, uh, apparently now you have more freedom to add more and more features because you don't have to worry about how it's going to work visually, right? And uh, every time I see a game that is pixelated or something like that, there's a high chance that game is going to have ridiculous feature that no other game could have, right? Especially if I'm reacting to something like Seth video or something like that. So, Space Station, Dwarf Fortress, so many things you can do. And especially in this game. This game is as, you know, free ability as there can be, right? You can literally do fucking anything, create any kind of server. Holy shit, how much freedom do you have in this one? Did remakes of SS-13 over the years and all have failed, especially the Minecraft three Only the spiritual successes like Barotrauma succeed. And even there you can see how the improved graphics, speed and interface massively limit the game in terms of items and interactions. With pixels, it's easy to make a system where whacking 10 random ingredients together can make any food, but how would you make that as a 3D model? It's that focus on gameplay that lets things like my next story happen. I was keeping the fine station of TG clean as Kenneth Gunderson, janitor at law. I was playing it like a game of viscera cleanup detail, right up until I got sprayed in the eyes by a moth with a virus. What did this virus do? It gave me the n-word pass. Indeed, after clawing my way back to my janitor's closet, I convulsed and soon turned into a black man. Soon after that, I died. Many others were suffering the same fate. However, death is not the end in Space Station 13. My Holy ghost shit. soon popped into the ghost. clone of Francis Filth. The really confusing part? Francis Filth was the one who cloned himself. Now oh, there were okay. two of us, soon to be three and later more. More Francises were marching forth from the cloning bay. It made conversations very confusing. 
Several deaths later, I came back as a Swedish wizard. That round was something else. But I did say I was doing a gambit through all the servers. Yeah, what was that in Fallout 3? Gary? Who are the, there's just only Garys in the whole vault. <laughs> Some space in that instrument could be like that. Just one guy and his clothes running around. And that means all the servers. That included this one, named after a goddamn dildo. The Fallout server. Back when I played, this was a normal server that everyone hated because of shit admins, and it was just generally shit. Now everyone hates it because you can fuck a deathclaw. I stepped out into this barren wasteland. It smelled of dust, of adventure, of stale cum. The first time around, things were pretty normal, and the only erotic roleplay, as the gentlemen call it, that I even ran into was a dude forcibly jerking off an insomniac. If you're wondering why I've blurred it, I have no idea either. There you go. Soon after, the anti-ERP zombies arrived and ate everyone. Another time I was ganked by a priest dressed as a crusader. However, I had the last laugh. It turns out that even whilst you're lying there bleeding out and dying, you can still slap people's ass. I consider that a victory. Next round, I'd made a decision. I was going to be the ERP hunter. Bait those bastards out, robust their balls, and run away with their pants. So I played the number one target for horny gamers, a Legion camp follower. What's that you say? Well, the Legion still think the year is 2015, and as such, don't allow women to fight, and often enslave them for farm work and breeding. A camp follower isn't actually enslaved, but I was prepared to be treated like it. I had my anti-ERP cultivate already, and I set to work. A few hours later, I'd grown a big farm full of food and medicine, the cook had made a feast like no other, and I'd learnt a few things. The Legionnaires were all kind and polite and got us what we needed, and I was beginning to think the NCR might just be the assholes after all. <laughs> then the NCR kicked our door in and exploded the camp in an attempt to kill everyone. To quote this billboard, fuck NCR. The NCR are the same as security on a <laughs> legions were caring they were a more of host right they gave you food and everything and NCI just came in guns blazing killed everything <laughs> fuck NCI normal station bunch of cunt muffins who can't roleplay to save their life and seriously make me rethink every single run of New Vegas I've ever done these aren't the only stories I've got from the Fallout server but the rest will have to go onto a different site you know when in Rome a word of warning to anyone thinking of actually going to Space Station 13 to get their rocks off ghosts can see the whole map when they're dead and they are some horny motherfuckers. If you really want to get your rocks off, just email me at brianisland45 at yahoo.com because I know far too much to keep it to myself. Now that we've sullied ourselves with stories fit for Slaanesh, let's go back to the Emperor's Light. That's right, the adventures of Lord Inquisitor Gunderson. This server is still in testing, but as the glorious Inquisitor, I managed to blow some orcs apart with my bolt pistol, survive a killer clan can attack, and beat the ever-loving shit out of some heretics. The server is very, very fun. It's still being worked on, but I will happily return at any time to do my duty. Many stupid stories later, we're finally here. The time I drove a station full of furries mad by doing the one thing Space Station 13 players hate. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, some of the things are going over my head when he talks about I need a time to process. But yeah, that just tells you that how complex Space Station 13 is overall, and all the different servers and stories. I like how people use their creativity to create servers and their stories and how you can play it. <laughs> Even the Fallout one is there, fuck it above all else. Paperwork. You see, I was finally my favorite role. Quartermaster, Kenneth Gunderson, head of the cargo bay. And if you wanted something, you were gonna sign for it, you lustful harlot. Players in Space Station 13 fucking hate paperwork. They want their goodies and they want them now. In fact, the first person I handed paperwork to promised to shoot me. They made the fatal mistake of recognizing me, however, and thus I would offer them no quarter. This was the paperwork I handed them. Detailed, isn't it? Some of this I wrote myself, and others I adapted from brilliant wikis. My favorite? My pen requisition. This is the form they fill out if they don't have a pen, and they'll immediately- <laughs> In the event of lacking pen, <laughs> it's fill out the false one to you by the staff of dude. Oh god. <laughs> this guy would make IRS, you know, basically shake. <laughs> Be given a pen. It makes me so terribly sad that I couldn't actually use it on anyone that round. But one day, one day, I'll get to see the reaction to this masterpiece. Regardless, this asshole wanted her multi-tool, but made the mistake of indicating that she may in fact be the only thing worse than a security officer, a communist. I then had to fill out a report on the suspicion of communist activities. First blood was drawn by none other than shit security themselves. This time it was a detective that came around demanding ammo. He smashed in the window, beat me with a stun prod, and shot me, all because I asked for him to sign for lethal items. Thankfully, the admins were on my side, and some first aid later, I was ready to receive my next order. A shot of cancer directly to my chest, from the same asshole from earlier. I told you, 
paperwork drove them mad. That round carried on jolly as ever once I got treated for my sudden onset cancer, and things were going great right up until the vines arrived. It was as always carrying some supplies for the crew to help contain what I thought were... <laughs> Like always, job is like you have to fill. You know, we live in a society. You have to fill up, fill out this form. The guy shoots him. Uh, just patches him. Got to do my work. This is the most important thing. Fill out the forms. I'm gonna do this until the last breath I draw. <laughs> Merely harmless vines. Supplies, by the way, were some weed killer and goats. I love Space Station 13. It was during this operation that I realized we'd gone an airlock too far. See, the vines in this game are apparently the toughest motherfuckers you'll ever see. They'll eat your station. They'll eat you. They'll eat you through walls. Vines are assholes. I'd still prefer them over security though. Space Station 13 is a brilliant game and you should play it. I'm just not gonna be the one to tell you how to. To avoid a screeching neckbeard kicking in my door and beating me to death with his stepfather's toolbox. I hope you enjoyed this trip down Insanity Lane. Let me know if you want more and I hope, if you're from the community, that you're already basting your boxes. Here's my P.O. box assholes. Have a good one. All right. <laughs> if this was Seth video, Seth would literally hold your hand and tell you how to basically play Space Station 13. <laughs> like you should go here, type here, type this address. <laughs> Man, I love this game, but you know, it's, I don't know what to say that, you know, the, the whole history of Space Station 13, how many times it was stolen, how many hopes you would climb just to play it. Maybe, you know, the, because there's no one official way to play it. Like that kind of makes me sad, but then again, that is the reason why it's so great. Because over the time, so many people modded it, changed it, right? Made it into what it is, I guess. But yeah, Space Station 13 is always fun. Somebody should, you know, th there's so many channels that become famous based on Minecraft, right? But so many things you can do in Space Station 13. People should play this game, create their own stories and put it up basically on the YouTube or something. That would be so fun. Well, people, that was Chaos, Death, Go, ERP and Paperwork. Space Station 13 review by the channel Remy. If you like my reaction, don't forget to like, subscribe, check out the reaction to this link in the description, check out the cards, link cards in here. I'll see you next time.